Yeah, so so they do that so that you know who you can go to to end up getting linked into this person. So like if it says here you are right. and and then here's the people in between that you that you know of because they're like in your connections that you can go to those people and say can you introduce me to Kevin Bacon. It'd be tough because the two people had like 400 each. So for them to go, which one of my 400 is connected to him, that'd be insane. Yeah. Well, can't you just go, click on it and then go and invite him to be? Uh, you you yeah. can, but then that person Doesn't could decide to, to say, I don't know you. Well, and that's the last time that, that they'll ever see an invite from you. The three degree is difficult because it's misleading, I think, in, in my opinion it is. Because you think, okay, it's just the next person. It could be the but fifth. You link into, yeah. So if you say, if you look at mine and I'm linked to someone that you'd want to know, that's the third person. Right. But if you linked on mine and went to my friends, you won't see that person on my connection. Right, it's right. It's one of those connections that could be embedded right, that's probably be hard five to find. down before right. you even get to that person. Right. So it's really, you'd have to go individually to, yeah, it'd be too, to a lot too of hard. trees to find, find that in specific third person because it's not exactly the third person. Well, it's thinking, beyond the third. If, they, if, if you invite them and they said no, I mean, so they're not on your, your network at that point. Maybe down the future when you actually meet them or meet somebody that you know, then they can be, I mean, you're, you're not well, going to want them on your connection anyways if you don't even know them and they're not they going to accept your... Well, it depends. <laughs> it depends on what you want. I mean, you may, you may want to meet them more than they want to meet you. I mean, maybe they've got the deal of a century and you really want to get to them and talk to them about what you have to offer. Um, and if they decide to say, I don't know this person, then you could invite away and, and they won't ever see your invitations. So then the only way that you can get to them then is probably through an introduction, I guess through an introduction. Or so are you else saying those, those levels disappear? If they say, no, I don't know you, then all the levels that got you there, the other degrees will disappear as well? No, I think um, they just... So I mean, you still have, they, you still go back and say, hey, at least try, and then if they say no, say okay, then go back to your... No, but the po point is more is trying to find that third person is extremely difficult. Okay, I guess I know. Okay. Um, I have a question. What's an, and I know this is really too general a question, but what's like an optimum number? Because I see people that have, you know, oh, yeah. my, my, my boss has 500. That's ridiculous. You really can't know. So I'm kind of for myself thinking, I want to stop at 150. I mean, after that, I know everybody personally there at 150. I think it Over depends. Over that, it's more like I'm going for numbers, you know? It, it depends. There's some people that call themselves open, open networkers. Uh -huh. And, and they, they say, uh, we'll accept every invite. Yeah, so I don't want to do that. Go to get the 500 plus or whatever. I, yeah, I, <laughs> it, well, they go way past it. I, and I think some of them even have it on, on we'll, we'll talk about the line that goes underneath your profile about what you're looking for, mm -hmm. who you are. Um, this one guy includes his totals, like how many connections I have. Yeah. And I guess different people have Maybe different reasons for doing what they do. He's promoting his Rolodex of customers so that like if somebody hires him like, as a sales rep, he has a Rolodex. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, see, and mine's not, that's not the objective. Yeah. But Maybe. Yeah, okay. So I think, it, I think, uh, I was thinking about how to answer your question. I don't really have an answer. It, yeah. it sort of depends. And I think, I think once, once you start getting into LinkedIn and you start using, you sort of develop a rhythm. Right. And, and you, and you, and you decide what you need to do. Initially, when I first got into LinkedIn, I think I had like 10 connections for a year. And I wasn't really doing anything. And then when I started thinking about developing opportunities knocking, I started seriously trying to, to link in with other people. And um, I think I'm probably up to about 250 people after about a year and a half of working at this because I don't really feel the need to, to link up with everybody in the world. But um, for some people, it's just a number game. I mean, I have no idea how many connections Eric and Avi have on LinkedIn. It's over 500, I know that. Right. They're recruiters, so I don't know how many people they're actually linked into. Right, right. Cause, okay. But if you think about it too, is, you know, you're the only thinking for today, you have to think in the future as well. And it's not so much that person, but how connected is that person to what you want to achieve. To where you want to be. Right. So I, I link to some people where I don't, I maybe met them a couple of times in my mm -hmm. career, but 
every time they add a person, you know, you get that highlight, mm -hmm. and I'll see it and see, oh, who did they add? Because mm -hmm. that, that, might, that might be someone I want to add. Yes. Okay. So not so much that person, but they're a vehicle yes. for other opportunities. Yes. So, mm -hmm. so you got to think about it that way. Have you ever, like, um, sent out some sort of advertisement saying, hey, I'm looking for, I, I, are you the realtor? No, she is. Okay, so, like, for her, have you ever used it and said, "Hey, I'm looking. Um, you know, if anybody needs to sell their house, blah blah blah." Have you ever done that to your connections and sent out a global? No, email? I'm, I'm kind of being really. Yeah. I have really good connections and really yeah. connected people, I, you and I don't. I, I, it. Right, and I want it to be every time they get something, I want it to be something of value. Yeah. Because I don't appreciate the whole Maybe, like yeah. you know something kind of mundane. So I'm trying to be really careful with it. Plus, I like to put my purveyors on there because I get constantly asked, who are you using for flooring, who are you using for carpeting, who's a good blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And this way I can just say, here's who I use, here's his resume. Because there is a certain liability if that you know, hardwood yeah. installer is not good, yeah. it kind of reflects poorly on me. Yeah. So I only pick the ones, and yet we want to give three, so if something happens, it's not like, oh, you're in cahoots with them. So yeah. that's why I, I don't want to keep it too big because it's like people right. I really know and I really work with and I can vouch for them. So you don't use it as a broad spectrum advertising, uh, you know. Okay. No, we use, face, we use Facebook because our company is big on this whole social media and we use Facebook, we blog, we Twitter, blah, blah, blah. But LinkedIn is just people that I know and I've actually declined some invitations yeah, just because I'm like, you guys, I, I knew you in high school and I didn't like exactly. you back then. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know, so, um, but, well, because then it dilutes the whole thing yeah. if you have like just every yeah. Joe Blow, but. Right. I've only been on it since December, so I could change my mind, but this is how I'm feeling about it now. Oh, I can see yeah. it's very powerful. I'm just wondering how people are using it. That's why well, I'm here. <laughs> I use it in a couple of ways. Any recruiter that contacts me, I put on there. Or if, any, if I've talked to them, because recruiters know everybody and it's a good way to get into a company. Uh, if somebody asks me to link up, um, I will accept it if I know them well enough to recommend them to somebody else, or if I know them well enough that I will pass along a recommendation to them because I trust them and know what they're capable of doing. Are you going to get into that? I mean, like, like I've never even done that because I think it's weird. And it's like, do, do what? You ask people, hey, will you give me a recommendation? No, you know what? <laughs> you know what? It's, it's, it feels a little strange initially, but it, it's so commonplace in LinkedIn. And, and normally, and yeah, I can talk a little bit about that in the slide set. It, it's, uh, it usually involves reciprocity, which, yeah. is, which even feels a little bit more weird yeah. because I'll everybody knows you. also. <laughs> But maybe not everybody knows. Maybe the guy that you're going to be working for in six or seven months, he's going to see the recommendation um, that you got from somebody and not necessarily going to ferret around looking to see if, if you recommended that guy too. Yeah. Although I, I actually misspoke. I, I meant to say referral, not recommendation. You know what I mean. Two that, separate, that. Yes, I know what you mean. And I don't recommend everybody and I don't take recommendations from everybody. I got a lot of people in my context that I don't have any intention of doing recommendations for or taking a recommendation from because they don't know me well enough I to give me a good how recommendation. That, how does that, um, you know, how does that happen? Does, do they contact you and say, hey, will you write me a recommendation? No, the or recommendations I have, I ask for. And it's it, like, there's a it, button that walks yeah. through. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, well there's a one that says, do you want to accept recommendations? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm wondering how people are getting them. Well, I'll tell you how, I mean, one, one example for me is um, the, the department that, that I was in, actually the same department Brad was in also that, mm -hmm. that spun down at Hewlett Packard, uh, dissolved, gone. Mm -hmm. And the man who ran the lab, who is a third level manager, was absolutely amazing. I, I thought, that's in my opinion, I, I didn't realize what he had done and the way that he created the culture in that lab until I moved on yeah. to other departments. So I wrote a recommendation, not because I was kissing up to him, but because I really felt that he did an amazing thing. You know Bob Bowler, don't you? Did he ever come to see you? He very unassuming, quiet guy. He's got a great sense of humor. Every talk he gives, he has a zinger, and he does it without even smiling. And you want to roll around on the floor laughing, and he just goes on then after you can't control yourself. And he loves it. So you actually went into his profile and gave him a recommendation? I recommended, yeah, I recommended the lab, and I think he thought I was out of work because so many people at HP have been laid out recently. Mm -hmm. He assumed that I was out of work, and maybe he thought I was asking him for a recommendation. So he contacted me and, and asked me if I wanted a recommendation. I said, I'd always take a recommendation from you, Bob. Mm -hmm. um, and so he wrote it in the past tense, mm -hmm. as if I wasn't with HP anymore. So I even did something more weird. 
I said, Bob, this is really weird, but I'm still at HP. <laughs> so yeah. if you would if you wouldn't mind, could you change it to the present tense? Yeah. He is instead of he was. He did. You're a great person. He changed it. He changed it. <laughs>